Guys, we are live here with Troy Baker, the voice of so many things. I will get tired <laughs> listing them off, mm. but the ones you may know and love are Uncharted, The Last of Us, Bioshock, Batman, Arkham Thing, Uncharted, Fortnite, John Wick, yeah. Hex, Hex. and Amphibia from Disney, right? That's the hey, name man. I uh yeah man that amphibia has has uh snuck up and grabbed me man it's I'm I'm glad that I can make a cartoon that my son is like just on the cusp of being able to watch <laughs> I have a philosophy that I want to leave this life exhausted and there's so much that I want to do and I'm I'm constantly either writing or thinking about projects that I want to do um um we we had this conversation where it's like, yeah. hey, do you want to do this thing? I'm like, yes. The answer is always yes. Most people go, I, I love to sleep. I'm going to see as long as I can sleep. I'm like, what's the least amount that I can sleep uh, so you in can order get for me to accomplish done. my goals? Yeah. 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 You know, it's funny you bring this up. Uh, somebody congratulated me on reaching the goal for our Kickstarter. I'm very excited about that. Thank you. Anybody Congrats. Anybody who's on the chat. Yes. Uh, it's been a, a month from hell, just like hitting it all up, uh, trying to get donations. Um and that, the story is about that. I mean, we're calling it a cosplay film because she's a cosplayer, but it is a character who, you know, because of pandemic and not getting to socialize normally is just online constantly swiping, scrolling, you know, uh, feeling jealous of other people, feeling insecure, all the things. Mm -hmm. And I think social dilemma, like kind of drove it home even more. I'm like, oh, this is really important uh, right now. So um I'm glad that I'm doing it because it was the, the timing of it all. I, I was thinking about it. I've been feeling a little overwhelmed with social media and then watching Social Dilemma and the films that came into my hands was like, it was a very uh, timely thing. It's synchronicity, you know? I, I've spent the last four years um, passionately and, and earnestly trying to not be so bound by the opinions of others. There's always like a, a, an inciting event, right? That's the, 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 the point of a good story is there's always an inciting event that sets the hero off on their journey um, or that brings about this wonderful story or creates this world or whatever. And we love those stories, but we hate by and large when it happens to us in our life, when there's the death of someone or there's the loss um, or there's some kind of moment of trauma that is actually an inciting event that will set us off on our adventure. Uh -huh. um, it's not always just finding a ring, you know, it's, it's, it's about, um, someone that we care about it, either, either through death or through loss. And that relationship, um, forces you to, to, to just sit alone by yourself. And I had this, uh, this moment, this event in my life that was actually, I, I realized now is actually a culmination of many moments that built to like great stories do a climax yeah. where I was like, man, my my currency is off. And I, I started thinking about how, like, what, what is your most prized possession? If you had to think about it, like, just my, give my, me anything. My friendships. Your friend, but your most tangible thing. Like, what is like this, this thing Physical. has, yeah. I, I guess my phone, just because memories are on there, you know, at work, everything. Great. How much did you pay for that phone? I'm paying it off, uh, you know, 700 bucks, whatever. $700. If I said that I would give you 10,000 Prussian francs, would you give me your phone for 10,000 Prussian francs? I don't know if Prussian francs right now are doing well in the world or not. It's a dead currency. Oh, Prussian francs. Right. right? So, so the, it's stupid to think of something that has a clear value, $700. You would yeah. never give that thing up for this dead currency that doesn't matter if it's so much more, but how much do you sell your joy, your sense of identity, your sense of self-worth because of a dead currency of likes or opinions of other people. And I had done that so much. I was trading my joy. I was trading my sense of value, my sense of, of self-worth and everything off of dead currency from people that I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. People that I didn't even know their real name. I like to ask all these questions about how you got into your career for the followers that I have that don't know you or don't know how you got into it. But I think that more important than that is like, what has been the emotional journey navigating, mm. you know, being in these huge video games and like traveling the world. Cause you were on a plane for uh, what you said, 200,000 miles last year. Yeah. Um, and 
and now you're sitting with your son and your wife and a few others in your, in your bubble. And so it's just, uh, I think that everyone is going through some sort of emotional crisis because of pandemic, trying to figure out what the next move is in life and love and in, in everything. And so for, to me, it's interesting. I've only been in this like video game insanity for almost four years. It you've is been, you've been in it for a lot longer yeah. uh, and you have crazy m- more experience. So I'd be interested to hear kind of like, that first game that like puts you out there and what it felt like, and then like, whoa, what am I dealing with right now? Or how it's, do I how do I self preserve? I I also think that I don't have necessarily more experience. I just have different experience because how can you? I remember asking like Siri or whatever. It's like how many ounces are in a cup, and or it was I think it was it was a uh, how many um, it was something that was what is a, a a weight of measurement, and the other is one of volume. And so you can't compare the two. It's like, well, I have no idea. What is it? You know, how many ounces, uh-huh. whatever, whatever it was. So the the difference that I have is, is my experience, which may be completely different than your experience, but they're just as important and just as valid because they mm-hmm. can teach. I, I, I want to do a podcast where it's like two people approaching the same industry from two different perspectives with the goal of how does, I want to learn more about what you do so that I can understand how what I do helps you do what you do. Mm -hmm. And I think that by and large, there's more of a focus on, I do this and you need to understand that this is important versus I know what I do is important, but I don't know why what you do is. And if I can learn what you what you do is important, then maybe I can be better at my job and help you do your job better. I moved to LA at the end of 2006 and I was the new kid in town that was just ready and willing to do anything for you, mister. And people did. And they were like, well, we can't get so-and-so because he's now too expensive. But this guy will jump into a booth and scream in for a microphone for, you know, this amount of dollars. Yeah. yeah. And so I did that. And then I finally found, I was like, this is not sustainable. And then By the screaming, I, do you mean video games or just any sort of job that came your way? Any sort of job. Okay. Anime, cartoons, commercials anything, anything I can get my hands on. If someone was willing to give me a job, I would do it. And then ultimately I was like, well, hold on a second. Um, Because A, this is not sustainable. I'm not, there's some people that are, there's people, I will never understand how people like Steve Bloom, Dee Bradley Baker, Fred Tatashore. um, There's a lot of people that do. All of those are amazing. All those people. But like Fred Tatashore, nobody except for Family Guy hires Fred Tatashore to just do Fred Tatashore. They're like, uh, we want you to scream and uh, we need you to be a 12 story green vault, you know, huge guys like, okay. And he does it. Cindy is D Bradley Baker. D Bradley Baker has been. Especially their creature stuff. His creature stuff. He plays his sign. This is like an instrument. It's crazy. I can't do that. And I was like, if I want to continue to do this, I got to slow down. Yeah. And my voice, if you heard me in 2006 versus, you know, 2020 now, there's a difference. I sound different. I can walk into that booth and if I'm not ready, people are going to be like, why don't you take a second and talk (laughs) besides thinking you could just show up for this gig. But um, it's something I, I I try to challenge people to do is like decatastrophy your language. If if you say typically it's like, I'm I'm devastated. Don't say that. I fell into that trap. You said I did two drills and I'm like, and you almost died. No, you didn't. I did I mean, almost die. You know what I mean? It's like people, no, I'm just right, joking. Right. I'm just saying that. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but right. We believe the story that we tell ourselves though. It's like, I am dying right now. I'm like, oof. Yeah. Just shake. And by the way, I'm, I'm all about exaggeration for a humorous effect. I think it's hilarious totally. to do that. Yeah. But if we tell ourselves, it's like, I'm never going to find somebody. Then your brain goes, okay, we're going to be alone. And that can be a very sad feeling. There's, I can't remember who said the quote is like, most of humanity's problems arise from the inability to sit in a room by yourself. And we're always trying to impress or prove. And especially if you're an actor, the second I go into an audition with the intention to show them, I'll give you a personal example. There was a scene in The Last of Us, and I've told this story before. So if you've heard it, sit back and enjoy. And those who haven't, equally think. Pay attention. I walked into this scene and I knew from the, from day one that this scene was coming and it was the infamous Sarah scene. And so we had been shooting for probably a year, Mm -hmm. um, out of two and a half years that we shot. 
And so we get there and I approached, if you asked me this, I would not have told you because I didn't have the honesty and the transparency and the confidence in myself enough to be honest with you. But I wanted to go into that scene and go, all of those people that thought, why did he get that role? And who is he? He's not a good actor. Or all my other friends that were doing, oh, were you still just doing games? I just got this new show. I just booked this new movie. Have you ever thought about doing real acting? To all of those people, I said, watch this shit. And the reality is, at the end of that scene, when Neil says very quietly, okay, cut, that is exactly what I had produced. Because instead of Joel, I was capturing a moment of Joel and his daughter. What I had done was for the benefit of myself, and to the detriment of everybody on that stage and what would have been the entire audience, I gave them Troy's demo reel. Mm. And I was present in that scene. Joel was absent. I thought that that was a horrible moment. I was like, my God, this was, what have I done? Oh no. And then Neil goes, I want to go again. I went, well, I have to do that. I thought we were going to be done in one. Oh no. We did it like 12 times. Uh-huh. And then he goes, okay, I think we're, I think we've got it. I think we've got it after 12 takes of me wrenching my heart out. And then a month later I was outside smoking and he goes, uh, so there's a scene we need to shoot or reshoot. I was like, yeah, wait. And he goes, we need to reshoot it. I was like, why? He goes, because it's not, it's just not working. And Neil tells me, he was like, I hate it. I was so nervous to come to you. Uh, and I, he felt like he had failed as a director and I felt like I had failed as an actor. And the beauty of that is that through that humility and through that process and through that trust, I became a better actor and most importantly, the scene became mm-hmm. better. Whenever yeah. you go into anything to impress people, you will immediately fail. I'm connecting this to <laughs> Brene Brown who mentioned something about, um, I mean, her, her work is incredible, but. Uh, when we are worried about other people's opinions online, right? And the comments and the this and the that. And one of the things that she's also realized is everybody who's commenting isn't out in the ring showing the world what they've got to offer, right? They're sitting behind their little screen going, oh, that sucked. But if they were to put themselves in that position of vulnerability, they probably couldn't because it's a really hard thing to do. So as social personas or as people who sh- are sharing stuff constantly in vulnerability, uh, if you're not in the ring also doing the same and you're just fight, uh, kind of like commenting from the sidelines and, and, and uh, being a troll or being a hater, it's like you're, it's almost like your opinion doesn't count to me right now because you're just, you're, you're a bystander that isn't willing to put in that work. And I think that that work is also teaching us who we are, right? And and how we we get to the deeper part of it rather than just being so comfortable. Ha ha, you suck, but I'm not gonna do the work to uh, find out who I am, right? And Um, if you saw me look over across my shoulder on the back of my booth, I have a quote that says, it is not the critic who counts, um, but whose face is marred with blood and sweat, who gets into the ring. True game is this, is understanding that you're a social creature that has to be in relationship with people without allowing them to determine the kind of social creature that you need to be. That is, that's the finesse, that's the jazz. And that's where the moxie and the dance is. If you can do that, go, your opinion of me holds no sway, but I have to be close to you. I have to be in relationship with you. It's not about being a misanthrope and isolating and insulating myself against you. I want to understand you. And the closer I get to you, your bullets don't hurt me. Smith and Neo are one. Yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and, the, and the deeper we understand ourselves, we, we understand what buttons you can push that are going to affect us, what patience I need to work on, what, if, if your comment was coming from an insecurity and why, why that happened, let's address it, or my insecurity, you know, I think that the deeper we, we search into all that stuff, um, it, it obviously makes our interpersonal relationships uh, deeper and more important and interesting. And it's not even about forgiving people from offenses. It's understanding that there was no offense needed. There was no offense given. And that's the thing is surrender your right to get offended and you never get offended. Yeah. 
learning to, well, the four agreements, don't take things personally, you know, that's one of them. And, and it is important to, to think of that because everybody is coming from their point of views and usually it's not personal. Troy, this has been a pleasure. This has really, this has really been nice. And I needed, I, I needed this, like, let's take a chill moment and talk right about stuff. You um, as well. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And we're going to work together soon. I'll Yay. be bothering some people over on your end to coordinate that. Uh, so thank you very much. And we're taking a little break, guys, from Twitch because for three weeks, I'm in pre-production and then shooting. So I, we, I can't physically do this all because it's impossible. I hope you uh, appreciate and understand. We will have some more Valorant people on who are also busy. So hopefully their schedules will be open when we um, when we come back. So thank you guys. Keep booming and booping.